we're all sitting home and let's provide some, let's provide, a, uh, let's have a good time. So uh, I was, I was asked to talk about uh, doing business in Israel, or I guess I, I volunteered to do that. I'm going to share my screen. I got a short PowerPoint and this, I keep this as an open discussion as much as possible. Okay. Get this done. See if we can get the technology to work here. All right. So I'm going to talk about Israel, the startup nation. Um, so I got a couple of questions. How many of you use instant messaging? Yep. How about take a generic drug? Yep. How about I've had an MRI or CT scan in the last five years? Yes. How many of you have saved something on a computer, computer file onto a thumb drive? Yep. How many of you use a cell phone or a computer today with Intel inside? Yep. And when lost, how many of you use the app called Waze? Yep. Pretty unanimous, right? You've all been using technologies developed in Israel. Um, so Intel has a major operation there. I've had a, the privilege of visiting it a couple of times. Um, instant messaging was a company called ICQ. It started out with two guys um, who were driving tanks and tanks were very loud and they couldn't communicate. And they said, how about if we could send messages back and forth so we don't have to worry about hearing and they created text mes messaging. Um, so uh, generic drugs, Teva still remains the largest generic drug manufacturer in the world. Um, so an MRI and CT technology, much of it comes out of Israel as, as did cell phone technology. So a little bit of background. As we know, Israel is a country of over 8.5 million people. And if you average it out, there's one startup for every 1,500 people in Israel, probably, probably the most in any area. Israel lives in, a fr in an area that's not very friendly, not a friendly neighborhood. They don't have natural trading partners. Um, and they've got to be creative. In 1966, the, uh, the Israelis up until that point for their air force were using French Mirage airplanes and France stopped selling to Israel. Now, if you look at this, this is a year before the, 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 the seven day war, six day war, excuse me. Um, and at that point, people like Shimon Perez and others decided that Israel could not survive only on bringing things in from the outside, they had to develop their own. So Israel aircraft industries were, were created and they began to, to build their own jets. They, be, they wanted to become more self-sufficient. The Holocaust actually plays a major role in this because the, the, the Israeli psyche is never again. What happened in the Holocaust can never happen again. So we can't rely on the French to sell us jets or the Americans to sell us jets or someone to sell us rifles or, or whatever that we really have to um, create our own. We have to be self-sufficient as much as possible. And that's created an attitude of, we need to really build things because we can't rely on others. So not being in a friendly neighborhood, having the memory of the Holocaust behind us, that's what started Israel on this track of becoming a startup nation. In the late, eight, in late 1980s, early 1990s, with the fall of the Soviet Union, there was Soviet Jewish immigration. Um, and when the Soviet Jews came over and they were asked what their occupation was, many of them said engineers. And the Israelis in the beginning thought that that meant that was engineers or anything. You know, and a sanitation worker was a sanitation engineer. And they didn't realize that these were highly trained people, that, that, the, Israel, that the Soviet Jews, couldn't, many of them couldn't hold jobs where they could get educated. So many of them kept working their way to more and more education. And there were very few industries they could work in. So they were just highly trained people. Uh, the only industry they could work in at, at varying points was, was the semiconductor industry, but anything that, that touched on the military, they couldn't deal with. So when they got to Israel, they had all this education and ingenuity, and the Israelis had to figure out how, how, how to put it to work. Uh, another part of this is anytime you move from any country, again, Israel is made up of immigrants. There's nothing more entrepreneurial than leaving your home to settle in, in some place, some place that's new. Uh, and again, that's that's the highest amount of risk taking that you can do is to leave which is familiar to you and go someplace. Again, you know, 90% of the Israeli population came from somewhere else in, in, uh, in this generation or, or the generation immediately before it. So lots of risk takers there. And then the last, another part of this is the Israeli defense, defense forces going back up to the Mirage jet thing and the, and the Holocaust, the IDF 
and there's units like unit 8200 um, decided that we need to take our best and brightest and put them to work to build uh, technology and, and devices that will help us in, with our security. So you, you take a test when you're, in, I think, 16, 16 and a half years of age, and you're placed into units. Unit 8200 is, happens to be one of the smartest units around. They're the ones who, st who do all the uh, cybersecurity. But, um, but in the Israeli Defense Forces, anything that you invent while you're in the Army or the Navy or the Marine or the Air Force or wherever, anything that you invent, you keep the IP. The Israeli government doesn't keep it. You can't use it for anything for security, military security. But when you get out of the, when you get out of the armed forces, it's, if you can develop something with it, it's yours. So here you've got 19, 20, 21, 25 year old guys and girls, but men and women, because the, 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 the Israeli uh, military is egalitarian, who are leading major efforts to build $50 million projects, leading, which is like leading a company, who, who leave at 28, 29 years old. They've been trained by the government, uh, by the, by the, by the uh, defense forces. They've gone to the Technion and other places, gotten their degrees, and they get out and they got this idea and they're going to move that, and they're able to take that idea and, move, and commercialize that idea for things that are not defense. That's what spurred on a lot of what we see in Israel today. You also have an education system that's very strong and has grown. You know, the Technion is like the MIT of Israel. Uh, and the Technion um, has really, and Hebrew University and Tel Aviv University, and even some of the smaller universities, Ben Gurion, Weizmann, and others, Weizmann, a leading research institution, are all developing leading thinkers. So there's more patents and, and there's more papers written out of Israel than almost any country per capita in, in the world. Um, so you have a strong training ground that's there. The next thing that, that, that developed is you have government support. The government realized in the, in the early 1990s that they could support this effort and grow their economy away from the agrarian economy that it was. I, you know, when I think about my first several trips to Israel, you know, what do you think of, of Israeli industry? It was the kibbutznik wearing the cobalt tumble hat, driving the tractor. Um, and it, and it, on all my visits to Israel, you know, we went to a kibbutz and you saw agriculture and you saw cows and you, you know, I worked in a factory that made uh, chicken coop uh, watering devices when I was, when I lived in Israel for a short period of time when I was in college. It was only a trip in, in, in the early 80s, I went to Israel and you do what we were doing all the fundraising stuff we would normally do. And at the end of coming back from um, Yad Vashem and raising our money and doing everything as we did, we had some time to kill. So they took us to a place that was manufacturing um, heart pumps, uh, impl you know, impl implantable heart pumps. And that's the first time I saw Israel from a much different perspective. Uh, and the government kind of caught on to that. In the, early 19, in, the, in the early 1990s, they created a system of incubators, 21, that's gone through a series of changes where you could take, first the Soviets went in and then the people coming out of the army went in, where they could take their idea and develop their idea with a lot of government support over two years. Uh, and that moved things out into the market. Then capital started coming in. There's the, in, in the early 90s, there was no venture capital in Israel. Now there's major venture capital in Israel and angel investing. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for your idea to be picked up and to get funded. Uh, Israel is now a home to nearly 300 multinational companies who have R&D centers in Israel. Actually, one of the first was Procter & Gamble, uh, you know, and that Mike Mills actually played a small role in. Uh, but now uh, virtually every country, every major company has an R&D center in Israel. Uh, and that's growing a lot of technology. The other part of Israel is it's a very informal country. You can get to anyone within three. It's so the three people, I mean, you either, it's either you're related to them, you served in the army with them, or there's someone's next door neighbor, or your aunt is married to somebody who knows someone. So the story I tell is, um, several years ago, I was in Israel with a group of uh, technology people with, that we brought to Israel, most of them not Jewish. On our first night in Israel, we went to, to a restaurant. One of the guys who took us to the restaurant, who was leading the group with me, was a guy named Absalom Haran, who, if he told you what he did for the military, he'd have to kill you literally. Um, and he, the only thing I do know is that he was Bibi Netanyahu's uh, commander in the army uh, in a very elite unit. Uh, and we're sitting in this restaurant and in walks, at that point, the former prime minister, he had been prime minister and he was running for, for election. 
And the first thing he did in that restaurant was come over and say hello to Absalom Haran. We introduced him to all of us. Um, and then, then he sat down at a table right near me and I continued the conversation with him and mentioned to him that my son goes to Ohio State University and that he was in a course on politics and they were doing the debate on Israel and he was playing Netanyahu in the, uh, in the debate. Uh, and, and Netanyahu said to me, call your son, I'll help him. So I took out my cell phone, dialed my son's cell phone. I said, here's somebody who wants to help you with your homework and handed my cell phone to Bibi Netanyahu who had a 20 minute conversation with my son, helping him refine his platform. Um, again, that happened because I knew Absalom Haran and Absalom knew Bibi. And that's how we got there. And that's what happens in Israel all the time. You can get to anybody because you got those kind of connections. Um, and everybody in Israel, it's a very informal country. It's on a first name basis. Even the prime minister, we call him Bibi. Um, and, and I've met with the prime minister since he was prime minister again. And you don't call him Mr. Prime Minister, you call him Bibi. And everybody's got, the, it, it's, it's that kind of thing. And the last thing about Israel, nothing's, nothing's a, a secret in Israel, obviously. It's, um, it's a small country. So when things are happening in the, in, in the entrepreneurial world, people hear about them. And what happens is that creates a, a hero culture that's not baseball and soccer and basketball, but it's entrepreneurs. So people really say, I want to be the next so-and-so because I know what they did. And that, that creates a whole attitude. So a little bit about, you know, about, about me and what, and, and this topic. Since 2003, I've been uh, going back and forth to Israel at least two to three times a year, scouting technologies and startup companies, which I've worked with again for the last eight, 17, 18 years. I've looked at nearly a thousand companies from Israel. I can go up, I looked at f four, three more today. Um, Israel's strength is new ideas, little less, little less proficient in actually bringing things to market. They're getting better at that. Uh, but they really come out with new ideas. They, they sort of end one and finish the other. So I mentioned Waze. The, the week Waze sold for a billion dollars, I was in Israel. Um, and it was like the top news of what was going on. And I had a whole series of meetings. And I was leaving on a, uh, to the, go to the airport at 8 o'clock. And I, this company keeps calling me. And they said, they got to meet with me. And I, so finally I said to them, I'm, getting on a, I'm taking a cab to the airport at 8 o'clock. If you can be in my hotel by 7 o'clock, I'll meet with you for an hour. And they, four people come to my hotel to, to pitch me on a, on, a, on a new idea. And one of the guys was the chief technology officer. He just retired from Waze. So this is a guy who made, I don't know, how many millions of dollars that week with the sale of Waze. And here he is pitching his next idea. You know, as I've said frequently, if that were me, I'd probably be retired at some points. But they don't stop. They kept going. Turns out it wasn't such a good idea. It hasn't gone very far, but they're constantly thinking. In 2019, Eggs of, of, of Israeli startups brought in over $21 billion. That's, that's very serious. And beyond the US and China, Israel's the most companies listed on NASDAQ. So I thought I would you know, give some examples of some companies that you've, you've probably heard of. So Waze uh, actually began as, as a company, the idea of how you move troops around, uh, and then that turned into a, a navigation software. The, the story behind Waze, though, that's just interesting, it's a social networking platform, because if you've ever used Waze, you put in you know, information. So they were, they were telling Israelis to put in information. It was, it was, it was a social entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial kind of thing. It was going to help the country. And a lot of Israelis put in a lot of information, which helped grow Waze. Then Waze became you know, a company that, be, that was purchased. A lot of Israelis got angry because they had supported the company with a lot of information. So, but that's the way Israel is. Given imaging, um, Gabi Marone, who I, I know, uh, was one of the founders of Given Imaging. These, guys, these were guys who worked together in an elite or group in, in, uh, in the army, created a drone, created the camera for a drone that sat, but a small camera for a drone that sat between the, uh, the wingspan that could, had very good um, optics. When they got out, they decided, are there other uses for that, that kind of camera? And they decided, you know, what if we could put something in someone's body that could take pictures? And Given Imaging was created, uh, later was, went public. Um, given Imaging, um, so what you do is you swallow a camera and it, it attracts your digestive system. It actually, my son was actually diagnosed with it. Uh, he has Crohn's disease and it was an area you could not see with an endoscopy or a or colonoscopy, and they discovered it through, given, through, through the pill camp. 
Um, surgical theater uh, started out, this is a, a, p people I know very well. He, he actually came, he's a guy who lived in Cleveland. Um, he is an Israeli who set up with, with uh, Lockheed Martin, the, the, the uh, simulator for the F-16 jet. The, that simulator is so, perf the, the Israelis perfected it so much that you can't tell if you're flying the simulator or a real jet. I've talked to uh, pilots who've done it. Um, what I'm not supposed to say is what I can say now is actually loaded into it where the, uh, uh, when I tried it, uh, when I was able to play with it for a short period of time, where, where the uh, bombing runs to the, uh, to Iraq, but they've changed it around, but it was so real that you could see the, the topography and everything else. Getting off, when they left the, when they left the Air Force, uh, they decided, you know, are there other uses for this? They decided a medical use. So surgical theater took that technology the, uh, and, and worked with surgeons and can actually now do brain mapping where in other mapping of surgical areas where surgery is, is very difficult. So if you make the wrong move in the brain, you could paralyze somebody. So there's a lot of practice and surgical theater allows you both to practice and also to, to map it out. They're now going into AR and VR mapping uh, of, of, of different, different areas. Um, eHealth Ventures is a group that I've worked with, and there are some people in the organization in the FJC who are actually um, uh, investors in. I am not because I've worked for the I, I was an advisor to the company. Uh, they are an incubator in the in the digital health field that's now working on uh, some really interesting new digital health uh, platforms. Uh, one is, and I'm going to talk about one later, but one is what's called tr um, TikTok. It's a way that if you know anybody who's ever had to go through speech therapy, this is an online gaming speech therapy background that it's, it's uh, built for, it's individualized and also the therapist can follow it. So you can, you can actually do more, more therapy because today what they do is they send you home with cards and say, you know, read through these cards. And most of the time people don't do it. This way you can actually track them doing it. It's a game, it's a fun game and kids and even adults like to play it. Um, that's going through testing right now. It's, it's in uh, piloting and it'll actually be piloted on a test through the Cleveland Hearing and Speech Center shortly. Checkpoint, one of the scariest places I've ever, I was just visited them a couple months ago. Checkpoint came out of the military again. It is a security system for uh, uh, computers. Uh, in their office, they actually have an ongoing map of every attack that's taking place, when it's taking place, where it started and where it's going. Uh, it really, if, if you remember this, what was it in the movie uh, where the, the, the uh, war games, remember the movie war games that, that they were showing uh, the missiles coming and going, that's what this looks like. I mean, it, it's pretty frightening. And these, they, they have to stay one step ahead of the viruses and other things that are out there that the bad guys are using. They are the number one company in the world to do that. Um, very interesting technology. Again, it started out by um, this group, of 80, uh, the 8200 group, which is also you know, was using, was both defending for cybersecurity and also using cyber uh, warfare for, on behalf of Israel. Mobileye, I think you've heard about that, sold to Intel for 15 or $16 billion, is a, a, the backup camera system and sensing system that cars will start to use, and particularly um, uh, unmanned vehicles. So this is, a, this is a really cool technology that allows you to, you know, to, for the car to sense what's, what's around it. Uh, what's hot, I'm going to talk about some things now. I'll, I'll say some of these companies that, that I'll mention now I've worked directly with. Currently, I'm not involved directly with any of them. This is not an invitation to invest, by the way, so I just have to say that, but uh, uh, some, some really interesting things. So the first one's a little blurry. It's a company I'm really high on called K-Health. Um, you, you can download it now. They have over 2 million users. Um, and what it does is it's, it's a... Um, you, you, you go on, you, you sign up and if you're not feeling well, you, you start a dialogue and behind K health is over 4 billion data points on health from different people, your age uh, and or our age and others. And, you know, and it starts to narrow down what you're based upon your symptoms. Um, what you, what it thinks you have and at the end of this diet, at the end of this, this, um, dial, this, this narrated dialogue, it comes up with two or three things that you may have. It'll tell you if you, you know, if you need to go to the doctor or not. If you want to see a doctor, you can push it immediately. So if you see on the, on the far side of the screen, what looks like a face, it'll say to you, where does it hurt? Does it, does it hurt here? Does it hurt here? Um, and they're constantly adding on to it. So it's not so much 
um, diagnosing as it's giving you what people like you may have in a similar situation. So it's very, it's very good. It's growing. It, it's right now. It's using with, with acute diseases, um, and we're, it'll also be something we can use with chronic diseases to help monitor uh, your condition. It's really cool. Uh, I encourage people to, to download it. khealth.com doesn't cost you anything, and you can you can easily uh, 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 play with it. So um, and it, I think I think you'd have a good time with it, and, and, and it's really helpful. Uh, and one of the goals, and it, 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 Bob, I was it was on as a doctor. Bob could, uh, could 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 go on the back end of this and see all the whole, all the questions that were asked, and the questions are asked not based up, are, are based upon how you answer them and 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 how it should be uh, and how it's um, narrated. So um, it, it takes about three to five minutes to get down to the diagnosis, but the doctor can then look at all your answers to all your questions and figure out and and then help him him or her if you go in to see the doctor to say okay cut out sort of the, the, the triage that needs to take place. khealth.com, train pain. Uh, this is actually in the eHealth incubator. It's a really cool gaming technology to train your mind. There's a lot of science behind this to train your mind away from pain. So basically you wear two bracelets and you play a game. And if you're, and, and what, what the game is, it'll give you uh, a pattern on either of your, on either of the bracelets and then you'll, have to mock the pattern in um, uh, mock mock the pattern in uh, in the game, uh, and in doing that, it, you do this about 15 minutes a day, a couple day, couple times a day. It begins to train your mind away from pain, um, and it, this will be a way we believe that it's believed will be to help get people both not on opioids but but off of opioids. It's now going through trials, and the trials have been very very positive. Early trials have been very very positive. Lemonade, uh, really interesting technology, which it, they've just, they've raised over a couple hundred million dollars. It's a new way to look at renters and homeowners insurance, where basically you create your own account. Uh, you pay them a small uh, service fee, and then they, you manage your own money. And if something goes wrong, you, you, your claims get paid immediately. Um, really interesting technology. We'll, we'll, it's, it will probably turn insurance on its head. I, I would look for it to be acquired by one of the major insurance companies because that, that's how innovative this is. WSC, I can't do it, okay. Uh, WSCsports.com. Um, not, again, not, not in the healthcare field, not in the cybersecurity field. Uh, I visited with these guys in November, unbelievable company. So what they're able to do is take high, Take, take game film from a game, you know, the, the TV broadcast and break down the highlights with no man, with no uh, automatically. So uh, all the NBA teams are now using this uh, as well as other major sports. So when you go online and so right now, if, if I want to show highlights from last night's game of let's say, you know, Steph Curry hitting a 30 foot shot, uh, somebody has got to go in and take it manually and do it. This can do it automatically by, by the parameters you set up and it can, be, it can be on your website before the game is over. And then personally, you can able to take, say, I really want to see Steph Curry. I want to see LeBron James. I want to see whoever. And I, this is what I want to see them do. You can get personal things as well. Sent right to, right to your place. It is re, they are working with all the top uh, franchises right now. It's really neat technology. And again, it's scanning. It's using artificial intelligence. And it gets right down to you know to what you want, and it creates it creates highlight films. Oops. Lost. Uh, sorry about that. Oh. So w so wsc sports.com if you want to see it in, in live action. So what are some other areas to watch from Israel? Artificial intelligence is huge. Is huge. Artificial intelligence is, by the way, is, is disrupting what robotics did to the blue collar world. AI will do to the, um, is doing to the, uh, to, to the white collar world. A, a lot of things that we, uh, that were analytics and other things are used are now being done by artificial intelligence. That includes everything from reading radiology reports to, um, uh, you know, figuring out exactly, you know, court cases and everything else. It's, 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 it's all, it's pervasive and it's, going to, it's only going to grow and Israel is a real leader in this area. Virtual reality, again, for both training, 
uh, gaming, uh, and a lot of other areas. Again, a, a major, major area. Digital security. Israel has been under attack digitally almost from day one. Um, and th 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 companies like Checkpoint and others are leading the way in, in digital security, both for our personal security and enterprise-wide security. Um, new drugs and vaccines. So you may have heard that Israel does have both a drug and a vaccine for coronavirus. Now, I want to caution everybody. I think, I think the president talked a little bit about it today. Uh, the president of the United States, not the president of the FJMC. Um, but uh, drugs and viruses, drugs and vaccines take at least a year to bring to market, even with expedited situations. Because the last thing you want to do is go out and inoculate 200 million people and find out you got a problem. Uh, or, or, so you got to figure out, you, gotta, you have to go through a, a pretty rigorous, even, even fast track um, pr product. So the Israeli vaccine for um, coronavirus was, I believe, this week put into the first live person. That's called First in Human, FIH. That, then it goes from there. So it, it's still a year away. They're also looking, they have, a, they have two drugs that they think will be effective in, in uh, coronavirus. One is actually an anti-arthritic drug uh, because what happens with coronavirus is the immune system begins to overattack the virus. And that makes you, um, that's where some of the problems come in. This drug would actually trick the, trick the system not to do that. Um, so there are things coming out of Israel, but there's a whole bunch of things in, in the area of individualized medicines, um, cancer treatments, Alzheimer's, MS, um, many of the major drugs uh, many major uh, maladies that we face, Israel's working on drugs to, to do that. A lot of that comes out of the, the Weizmann Institute, Technion, and, and other, and other uh, research areas. But again, that, that's a long haul. Teva, which is the largest generic manufacturer of drugs, is also w working now with some new drugs as well. But Teva's been, taken some pretty big hits recently, again, because of the opioid situation, and their resources are somewhat down. <clears throat> Obviously, anybody who was in Israel you know, 25 years ago, is you, you couldn't turn on the, you couldn't get an ice cube. You couldn't turn on the water for more than three minutes. I, Israel today has an overabundance of water because of the technologies they developed. 90, 80% of Israelis' agricultural water is actually re, 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 uh, recycled water. Um, they've been able to take water from air. They've been able to, to, to desalinate water. Um, so a lot of these technologies, they've been able to purify water. They, uh, you uh, it was big news in Ohio, but algae blooms in Lake Erie were killing and were creating major problems in the water supply here uh, two summers ago. Um, Israel's got companies that are now working in, it was in the Toledo, Ohio area, in that area to, to, to remove those blooms and to keep the water safe. Uh, a lot of technology to, to purify water, uh, working in, in, in Arizona, another place where there's water shortages, a lot of gr really cool companies in that area. Alternative energy again, same thing. A lot of solar and a lot of solar products, solar storage items. Um, again, major area because Israel's because of its own need for energy. Until very recently, it had no, it didn't have its own oil, or the only oil it had, it gave back to, to Egypt. Uh, it, it's really been on, on top of that. Um, and then automotive and aerospace, um, uh, mobile eye being one, but a lot of the air, uh, automotive companies and the aerospace companies are in Israel. Working, working that area, um, the autonomous vehicles, uh, uh, drones, uh, and a lot of technology in planes that, that's coming up will be, um, is coming out of Israel. Uh, and that, that, that includes everything from new metals to, uh, to, you know, to the technology that goes into the planes. I don't know why this keeps doing it, but let's see if I can. So with that, that was the end of it. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or just have a little dialogue about what, 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 I just, what we just laid out. Uh, this was really interesting, Tom. Can we get a copy of the charts? Sure, I, absolutely. And it was also, uh, it was also um, recorded. Yeah, I, I'll also tell you, one of the problems of working at, at home is I've done this, I've done this before, obviously, uh, my, the, uh, the other, the PowerPoint I normally use is, is in my office. I, I couldn't get it out, so. 
Hey, Tom, that, that was fascinating. Thank, thank you for sharing that. And I got to say, personally, I think it's really encouraging to see all this wonderful work and technology and brains in, in action with respect to what's going on right now in the world. And I, I've got confidence that things will work out. So this is, this is really timely, too. Thank you. The other area I should put up there is fintech, a lot in the area of, of, of new financial te technologies. Um, I worked with a company uh, a couple weeks ago that actually has a technology for startup. You know, it's, it's hard to get money for startup companies, uh, but they have a way of, of doing due diligence on the companies and, and analyzing the risk factor that 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 people could get. Uh, they could give money. They also can do the same thing for small businesses with credit cards. So I met with them in a bank so that they could actually help the bank give credit cards to businesses that they could not right now validate. Tom, I'm, I'm curious, can, can you share with us what your role has been with all these companies? Where, where you step in, what your expertise, what your dialogue is, and, and, and how, you, how you got into this position? So in 2003, um, I was working for the city of Beechwood, Ohio, and we decided to expand internationally. The city of Beechwood, which is a suburb of Cleveland, is 94% Jewish. So we looked at each other and said, where can we not get into trouble expanding internationally? And Israel became, the, you know, no one's going to argue that, you know, we have to take trips to Israel, right? Uh, so we started that. And the, the goal there was to actually be able to co-develop companies in the United States. We brought over 14 Israeli companies, um, actually 14, and then we worked with another one of 15. Um, one, of those com one of those companies sold for about, a, about $750 million. Unfortunately, I had no money in it. Um, but I did get a nice thank you note from them. Um, <laughs> I said that to my, actually, there were two Israeli companies I did work with, I volunteered, I helped them, but I couldn't take a role in. Both sold the same week, one sold for 750 million, one sold for 100 million. Um, and, and they both sent me very nice thank you notes. I said to my wife, I, I wish money would have come, you know. Uh, so, uh, that's a, so we started out by, by moving companies in, and then in 2007, I was hired by the Cleveland Clinic to uh, work on cardiovascular comp uh, companies. And they said, we know what you're doing in Israel, continue to do it in Israel. Actually, they, they, the guy who, who's told me that said uh, he was from Ireland. He's, his background was Ireland. He said, I'll only go to Israel if you take me to Ireland. He's been to Israel seven times. So I'm wearing green today in honor of him because we took him to Ireland as well. Um, and we started working with companies. So in the healthcare world, uh, we've been reaching out and uh, then grew that to a number. We started doing some consulting work did a number, uh, through the Cleveland Clinic, a number of clients that came from Israel. So that's, uh, so I've been in that world. So I've been going back and forth and going back and forth. Again, being a small country, people got to know me. I got to know people. So, you know, moved around. So I'm, I'm not as in depth right now in the, in the tech, in the high tech world, though I see some things. And then last, uh, in November, I took a, I helped lead a group of MBA students to Israel. And we went around and saw we went from company to company. So we set up a lot of those meetings. That's through a lot of different doorways. Will you do an FJMC group at some time? Yeah, we actually did one a couple of years ago. It didn't, we'd, we'd be happy to do an FJMC group too. You know, can't go to, so two weeks let, let ago, know. two weeks ago, uh, the, um, the Israeli, a group of Israeli nurses wanted to learn about family practice nursing. So the government of Israel contacted me and asked me if I could set up a tour for them of Cleveland. So we gave him four full days in Cleveland. It was the head of nursing. So Israel has social, it has um, national medicine, but there are four HMOs. It was three of the head nurses of the HMOs and, some, and one of the head nurses from the Ministry of, of, um, the Ministry of Health were, were in Cleveland and we set up this tour for them. They spent one day in each institution and it was, it was, it was good, really, it was important for them. So when they got, the day they got back was the day the, the um, quarantine in Israel started. They weren't quarantined because they were, they're essential. So I wrote him a note saying, I'm coming to Israel. They said, you can't, you'll be quarantined. I said, well, you guys, you know, you owe me a favor. I'd like to be quarantined at the Royal Beach Hotel on the beach in Tel Aviv for two weeks. If the government will pay for it, I'm happy to come to Israel. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> they haven't taken me up on the offer yet. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. Uh, you mentioned, you, you mentioned the advancements in water. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been in Israel in a while, but the last time I was there, the Dead Sea was was basically drying yeah. up uh, yeah. because they were taking so much water out of the Jordan. Has that problem been solved, or at least are they working on a, on a solution for that? So, yes. So it's not solved. So 
I remember going to the Dead Sea in the, in the early 70s, and it was one sea. It's now divided in two. Now, I was in the, again, I, I was floating the Dead Sea in November. It's still there. They've built a canal from one end of, to the other. They're thinking about pumping in water from the Mediterranean, but they got to make sure they can maintain the same mineral content. Salinity, yeah. Salinity. Um, there's been a lot of rain in Israel This was the last couple of years. So the Galilee is full. Um, again, one of the important things, the strategic importance of the Golan Heights, again, pre-67, what people don't remember is one of the things that Syria was threatening to do was to reroute the Banya Springs, which had taken water out from coming into Israel. Uh, and that's, that's now under is Israeli control. Um, there's also talk about building uh, to bring water into Jordan because and Israel's been working with, uh, on this as well. Um, I think of the name of the guy, he's got a great organization. Uh, actually, my niece worked for him for a while. She's in, in ecology. Um, they're thinking about bringing ways of moving that. So yeah, the Dead Sea still doesn't look right. I mean, but it's, you can still go in at the water's you know, clean and they're figuring out ways around it. Um, but they're, there's a, they're, they'll either bring it up from the Red Sea or from uh, the Mediterranean. Okay. And they gotta figure out, they gotta figure out this, the science about the, the, the mineral content. It's different. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Tom? Comments? Okay. This is great. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you for all our, to our participants. Wonderful. Uh, Alan, thank you for putting this together. We thank everybody. Again, we're going to be doing the next one is fr uh, Thursday. Stan's going to talk about data security. This is great. And we'll have a number of others. Um, I, I just, I mentioned Alan as people getting on. I was got off, I jumped off a call from the conservative movement where we're going to start putting up some joint, uh, jointly promoting things that are taking place. And this will be, and these, these series will be promoted. So we want to you know, pass the word on to people. I'm, I'm glad to be the first one to do this. It's, it works. And, uh, Hopefully uh, we can get more people involved. You know, we can continue to get more people involved. We're bored and you know, at home not doing anything. Well, thank you again, Tom. Thank you to everybody. Thanks for this joining. This is wonderful. This is Please wonderful. Stay safe. Please stay healthy. Yeah. Hope all is well. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good night. Take care. Hey, Ann. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.